Welcome back to Music Kingdom, and back by popular demand, another blind review of a metal song. Now, while I have been trying to diversify the content on this channel, with our last video being a comprehensive, in-depth comparison of the vocal talents of Freddie Mercury and Michael Jackson, even still, I have been getting a lot of comments on the Iron Maiden review, on the Metallica review, on the Tool review, and many of those comments were recommending the same song, and when I saw that this song was from the 1970s, which is my favorite decade of music, I knew I had to review it. So in this video, we are listening to giving a music theory breakdown for and blindly reviewing Stargazer by Rainbow. Hang tight. Hey music lovers, my name is Francis. If you'd like to support the work I put into these videos, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. Speaking of subscribers, I would like to say thank you. It took just a few short months to reach 1,000, and then only a couple weeks to reach 2,000, and then we hit 2,500 before we knew it, so I'm blown away and very grateful. And of course, if you'd like to support the channel even further, you'll find Music Kingdom's Patreon and other affiliate links in the description below. All right, now before we give the song a listen, first let's briefly talk Stargazer by Rainbow. Now as mentioned previously in my other metal reviews, Typically, at this part of the video, I am talking about history, context, facts, trivia regarding either the song, the album, or the artist themselves. But since this time I'm the one being educated and exposing myself to something new, I will encourage you guys to drop comments below leaving any information, facts, trivia, history about either the band, the album, or the song itself. But even still, this is still Music Kingdom, and on the off chance that someone stumbles upon this video not really knowing too much about the song or the band, I will give some brief history. Stargazer by Rainbow is from their second studio album released in 1976 titled Rising. To my knowledge, band leader Richie Blackmore kept Ronnie James Dio and then recruited drummer Cozy Powell, bassist Jimmy Bain, and keyboard player Tony Carey for the new roster on this album. To my knowledge as well, I was very surprised to find out that this song features the Munich Philharmonic Orchestra, and lyrically speaking, the song has been called a morality tale, with lyrics written from the viewpoint of a slave in the Egyptian times. Essentially about a story of a wizard who's also an astronomer who becomes obsessed with with the idea of flying and enslaves a vast army of people to build him a tower which he can take off and fly. In addition to that, while I'm only reviewing Stargazer in this one, I also found out that the next song titled A Light in the Black is a continuation of the lyrics in this song. Now as usual, in my metal reviews, I will throw out the quick disclaimer that by saying I am a non-metalhead, I do not mean to insinuate that I dislike metal, that I am anti-metal. I am simply saying that as a music lover of most genres and decades, the genre of metal specifically is just one that I haven't really dipped my toes into, but I do have a lot of reverence and respect for it. So as usual, in the comments, as you have been doing, recommend other metal songs for me to continue on with my journey and to potentially review next. Now without further ado, it's time to give the song a listen. I will be pausing periodically throughout the song to give my thoughts, but more so to avoid any copyright strikes. And of course, be sure to stick around after the song for a music theory breakdown from our expert, and then we're going to divide the song into specific categories, grading them each and arriving at an overall score. God. Oh, what an introduction. I 
like how it's put together. And it has a certain 70s sound to it that I love. Thought so far, hell of an introduction, and you can really feel how well put together it is from the start. What's gripped me most about the song, at least so far, would definitely be the lyrics. And yes, I did know what the story would be going into the song, but I wasn't quite sure how it would be delivered, and I'm just very taken back at how well written it is. I love the build up. the haunting vocals. Wow. Oh, the drumming too. Gorgeous. And the lyrics have a certain pain to them. What a solo! Oh my... Oh! It's simultaneously epic and beautiful. Shit. Oh, right back. Hell of a solo. Okay, that guitar solo. Face melting, absolutely beautiful. And it wasn't just noise for the sake of noise. It felt like it really had an artistic direction and expression to it. Well fitting with the mood of the song and the lyrics too. And at this point of the song, even though yes, the lyrics are absolutely one of the stars of the show, you really feel how the rest of the music production-wise and compositionally has taken full form. And really with the style of vocals, how well it's put together in production and how it's composed and the instrumentation really do complement and fit the subject matter of the lyrics so well. And even though, yes, I'm very impressed with how well put together it is, especially for the 1970s, I'm still curious to feel the presence of the Munich Philharmonic Orchestra. So I get the feeling I should be even more excited for the song's conclusion. There's such an element of storytelling too. 
pain. Oh my god, it's so well put together. And to do this in the 70s. Rings. I was wondering when they'd come in. Oh my god. This is beautiful. Wow! You're so invested in the story they're telling, too. Combined with how the music fits it so beautifully. And the strings. Wow! Initial thoughts before we go to the Experts Corner and before we eventually break apart the song grading it and arriving at an overall score, it shouldn't surprise me that a 70s song would have such creativity and attention to detail. It is my favorite decade of music as mentioned for those reasons and many more, but I think where I'm coming from is more specific to the metal genre. And of course, no, I do not claim to be a metalhead like you guys and no as much as you guys, but I would assume that a song this old of this style is very pioneering, is very trailblazing, is very groundbreaking, is very influential. Keeping in mind as well that to my knowledge, and please feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, but the genre of metal didn't really become what it was until a bit later in time. I'd like to acknowledge as well that even though this song is technically probably hard rock instead of heavy metal, you can still feel the seeds of it. You can still feel the roots of what's to come. Very impressed for the most part, top to bottom, but as if I wasn't already sold on the song, that final minute or two when the Munich Philharmonic Orchestra finally kicked in and you get that injection of strings as the song is reaching this epic conclusion absolutely blew me away. I can't say all the songs that I blindly review on a first time listen are songs that I end up listening to very often in my own personal day-to-day -day life, but this one, maybe because it's 70s, maybe because of the strings, I can absolutely see myself playing this all the time. And now before I can break apart the song into specific categories, grading them each and arriving at an overall score, let's first go to the expert's corner for a music theory breakdown and to hear what he has to say. Welcome to the Experts Corner. This is Stargazer by Rainbow. This song is in the time signature of 4-4. For the most part, there's the odd bar of 3-4 in there. According to the internet, it's in the key of B minor. But having listened to it a couple times, I don't know about that. It starts in what sounds like E minor. Then the main riff that repeats the most throughout the song, it goes from A minor to G major. I'm gonna explain that riff soon. And then the beautiful guitar solo, which I'm also gonna explain, they're just riffing on B major, which is very much not B minor. So as for the key, I'm really not too sure. I'd love to hear you guys' input, those of you who have heard the song more times than me. One of the main riffs, for example, the one that goes through to the end. Let me show you what it is. It's pretty simple. You've just got A minor, like I said before. 
and then G major. That goes back and forth with this melody. Even though I'm pretty sure they're just power chords riffing under that without the major or minor, it's the melody that kind of fills it in and tells me that they're A minor and G major. Next up is the guitar solo, and for the most part that guitar solo is riffing on B major. And it pretty much just stays there. What's amazing is that the guitarist is playing it in the B Phrygian dominant scale. To give you some context, a normal B major scale sounds like this. B Phrygian dominant, without getting too into the weeds, sounds like this. You might notice it kind of has like an exotic, almost Middle Eastern Egyptian vibe to it. And the fact that he played that solo in that very uncommonly used scale is super cool to me. I'm just gonna fool around with that scale on the B major chord and you'll see what I'm talking about. If you've ever played an old video game that has a desert level, you've likely heard this scale. The list of ways that this song is great is insanely long. The vocals are incredible. The production is great, I noticed like a subtle phaser effect in there. The drumming was top tier. That intro alone made a hell of a first impression on me. The lyrics tell a really fun story. They brought in a freaking orchestra near the end. Those last couple of minutes are hypnotic and powerful and... Badass. And of course, as I said, there was that incredible guitar solo. Points-wise, this song is sitting pretty high, but I have to take off points for one main thing, and that's that there wasn't much going on musically. Melodically, yes. Chord-wise, it sat on a lot of the same chords, same power chords, back and forth and back and forth. Even in that amazing ending, which I loved, it was just back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. I think the song could have done with a little less repetition and maybe just a little more variety. But who am I? I'm not the one who made this legendary song. I'm just giving it a score and that's what I think. So with that being said, I'm gonna give this song a very high eight out of 10. Back to you, Francis. A very special thank you to our expert for providing a music theory breakdown and giving the song a very strong 8 out of 10. And now it's time to break apart the song into specific categories, grading them each, and arriving at an overall score. Starting out with composition specifically, I'm inclined to give this song's composition a very healthy 7.5 out of 10. I feel its melodies are very strong and creative. I do feel the structure, albeit simplistic, is also impressive as well. The reason, however, I'm not going much higher than a seven and a half, which in my opinion is good, but not quite great, is simply because if we're talking about chord progressions or time signatures, or for example, the complexity of a song like Lateralis by Tool. If we're looking specifically at the compositional structure and makeup of the song alone, ignoring all the other categories, I do feel it's very good, but not great, which is reflected in the score. I don't mean to be too vague or brief when talking about the composition, but with our musical expert having just broken it down, I'm not going to get redundant. Up next we have production specifically, which I am giving a very strong 8.5 out of 10. Whether we're talking about the decision to have the song open with a bitchin' drum solo, whether we're talking about knowing when the perfect time was to inject that face-melting guitar solo, or whether we're talking about how well the song was mixed, particularly those vocals, and especially on a song that is so old. This song, in my mind already, is such a truly great production, even though it is, I will say, kind of difficult to gauge and grade production in the genre of hard rock or heavy metal. But then the decision to throw in the Munich Philharmonic Orchestra in the final minute or two of that song, giving it that last injection of energy. It was such a brilliant production decision, in my opinion. Eight and a half out of 10, in my opinion, is truly great. The only reason I'm not going higher than that is simply because the genres of hard rock or heavy metal, by default, are going to have productions that lean on the simple side. Up next, we have lyrics, which I am also giving a very strong eight and a half out of 10. For starters, am I surprised that the lyrics in a metal song are amazing? No, I am quickly learning to expect that now. Nor am I surprised that the lyrics in a 70s song are also amazing. It was such a great decade for self-expression and creativity. All that being said, I am still taken back by how well written these lyrics are. Now to be fair, are they the most poetically written lyrics ever? Is there a lot of wordplay going on? Is it true brilliance and pensmanship rivaling some of the greatest songwriters in the history of music? 
Probably not. That would be perhaps a nine, nine and a half, or a ten. But even still, these lyrics had such beauty. It was such effective storytelling. You're invested from the very beginning all the way to the very end. And there were moments when the music was really picking up in alignment with the lyrics taking shape that I did get goosebumps. I also love that by the end of the song, it kind of comes full circle with the wizard finally making it to the top, but instead of flying, he falls and dies. So well written with the lyric being time standing still and blood on the sand. I mean, it's just brilliant and it really makes me wanna hear the next song on the album. All in all, in my opinion, the lyrics were very inspired and very original, which is what you're looking for in an industry that is riddled with redundant, generic, uninspired lyricism. Up next, we have vocals, which I am giving a very rare nine out of 10. In my opinion, as good as this song is top to bottom in all the varying categories, the vocals for me might be the star of the show aside from the strings. Absolutely killer performance. I loved the vibrato. I loved the moments when he would belt it and hold it. All in addition to a vocal style that I'm assuming would prove to be very influential for metal artists and bands of the future. You can really feel his versatility as a vocalist and he knew when to show it off and really showcase the chops he had without it being necessarily obnoxious. Tastefully done in my opinion and well aligned with the lyrics when they were talking about certain things that really amped up the emotion. He knew exactly exactly what to do with his voice in those moments so that they hit you even harder. At last, we have our final category of originality, and I am giving this song's originality another very rare nine out of 10. Is it the 70s? Yes, and in my opinion, is that the decade that had the most musical creative originality of any other decade? Also yes. But even still, if we're talking about the inspired lyrics, if we're talking about the immensely creative melody of the guitar solo, if we're talking about the brilliance of incorporating the Munich Philharmonic Orchestra as well, and this song likely blazing the trail of metal music for years to come, in my opinion, yes. Hell yes, this is an incredibly original song, especially when you think about today's music. And yes, I am generalizing a lot of it is good, but originality and inspiration and authenticity and expression are becoming, in my opinion, more and more rare. So hats off to this song's originality. It truly blew me away. So now if we add it all up, throw in the expert score and average it out. Stargazer by Rainbow from their second studio album released in 1976 titled Rising gets a very strong 8.4 out of 10, which in my opinion, anything above a 7.9 is truly great. But as always, let me know whether or not you agree with my assessment. Am I right on the money? Am I batshit crazy? Am I somewhere in the middle? Let me and others as well know about any history, facts, trivia, context regarding this song, this album, or the band themselves. And of course, drop any song recommendations as well in the comments below, regardless of decade or genre. But particularly with this song being something that is very up my alley personally and something I anticipate playing very often. Any song recommendations that you think I'd like based off of this one would be greatly appreciated. As mentioned, if you'd like to support myself and the work I put into these videos, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And of course, if you'd like to support the channel even further, you'll find Music Kingdom's Patreon and other affiliate links in the description below. This has been another edition of Music Kingdom. Thank you so much for listening with me, and I'll look forward to jamming with you in the next one.